Uh, what are the ways that Satan always targets? Number one is the lust of the flesh. We're tempted by the flesh to chase pleasures. And, and it's just a constant longing. And every one of these are legitimate desires. Did you know it's legitimate to have a house? Uh, it's legitimate to be hungry, to need food, to need water. Did you know God invented sex? It's a very legitimate desire to desire sexual relations. That is normal, healthy, human. But God has just put one limitation on it, marriage. You know, the big M here. And he said to a believer. So one limitation, sex inside of marriage, and for a believer, you should marry a believer. Yet Barna and Gallup can't find a difference between American Christian college students, saved and unsaved at an equal percentage, have sexual relations without marriage. Isn't that interesting? Why is that? Because the lust of the flesh is so powerful that we allow legitimate desires to be fill, be fulfilled in an illegitimate way. And, and it always is about, oh God, you don't understand my needs. See, we're back to the man that John MacArthur called. You don't understand, my wife isn't nice to me, my wife isn't close to me, she doesn't have a warm romantic relationship, but my secretary thinks that I'm the greatest thing on earth. And so I'm going to ditch this one, and I'm going to satisfy my legitimate desire for friendship, closeness, love, everything, in an illegitimate way. That's like commanding stones to be made bread. Is there anything wrong with bread? No. But it's wrong to do it your way instead of God's way. See, that's what Jesus said. I'm not going to do my own will. I'm going to follow the box, what God has defined in his word. But, but it's constantly a temptation because, remember, we have the traitor inside. He doesn't get saved. That traitor inside of us, our sinful flesh, doesn't get saved. It's with us, Paul said, to the end. We're supposed to be beating it down and giving it knockout blows and denying it and mortifying it. This, lust of flesh, are all the cravings of our body. And it's, it's a constant struggle we go through life. Whether it's food, whether it's pleasure, whether it's fun. Our bodies were built to crave, and God says, don't allow your sinful flesh to control your cravings. It's either God, his spirit, his word that controls our cravings. And we start figuratively wanting to move down from camelback. Or we let our flesh crave and we keep moving up in life and, and fulfilling the cravings that our body has. God says our fleshly desires are worldly. He's against them. He's against lust in any form of our lives that is precipitated and driven by our flesh. And he says that it denies the love of God. And that's why, do you know why a lot of Christians are not full of joy, not full of peace? In fact, I was addressing um, those 285 kids all week long, the ones that made me sick. And, um, and I told them, I said, there's only two kinds of Christians, healthy and sick ones. Healthy ones, I mean, the very first thing in their life is not their digital life. They're not living in electronica. They are living for every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Did you know after one of the sessions I called Bonnie, I said it was really neat. I said, how many of you have read the whole Bible? You know, just what I do here. I don't ever say anything I don't say here. It's just it's shocking to them because they never hear this. I don't know why they don't. I said, how many of you read the whole Bible? You're in a Bible institute. Stand up if you've read the whole Bible. That was bad. I said, thank you. I said, how many of you would like to read the Bible? Everyone raised their hand. I said, you all have the same 168 hours. It only takes 72 hours to read the whole Bible. Did you know after that, I had a line, this group. They were all forming groups. They were going to hold each other accountable, and they were going to say that they couldn't do their this until they'd done this. And they were going to have a group around them. And it was so sweet to see them figuring. They had their little calculators out, 72 hours divided by. And they all, one of them said they were going to read for 18 minutes a day. Another one said 48 minutes. That was the aggressive group. You know, they wanted to read the Bible in three months. I mean, they were really excited. 
see, all of a sudden, it was the cravings of the spirit, not of the body, that were, all of a sudden, they saw the difference.